as the title implies, yes, the duty community's criticism on levels, art, and more is absolutely worthless. For almost all of it, it doesn't matter where it comes from, whether it's from Geostorm, HFC, AP Team, this game's moderators, standard creators, and players, there's a big chance that the criticism provided can really suck and be really unhelpful. Stormfly, is this just your attempt at trying to make the house here for Demo in the ice community again? No, actually. I could give a pretty extensive list of things wrong with that series, but that's not what the point of mentioning this is. That being said though, the Hell series is a pretty ideal mention for this topic since it perfectly demonstrates the main issue of criticism in this community, but I'm not going to talk about that series to avoid being potentially biased. This is more to establish for what the community deems to be both good and bad levels. There is actually a reason for why it is so wildly inconsistent, which will be discussed here. But is not players enjoy a good metric to determine what people deem to be the best level in this game? Clearly, overall, if people enjoy a level, it's better than those that people don't enjoy. Well, no. Enjoyment rate is subjective. People enjoy different things more than others. But there are, in terms of a philosophical sense, objective statements that can be said on the creation of art, and this can tie into the creation of a GD level. To summarize the creating community to some extent, there are two main sides that approach creating and criticizing levels differently, but they are both wrong for different reasons. There are those who think that everything is subjective, and that there are no inherent issues with the expression of art in the first place. Their point is that essentially what people think about art, whether they personally feel that they like it or hate it, is the only aspect that matters. This mindset is dumb, not because of the mindset itself, because technically, there's nothing wrong with it, but this is more dumb in GD because of how it is approached in this community, which I will discuss why later. Then there is the other side who stick to so-called the rules and believe anything that deviates from them is bad. They essentially invent and misuse terms as if they're experts on them and it's just as detrimental as the other side, if not more. Instead of encouraging creative freedom through proper tools, they act like there are unchanging rules to how creating works, which has the effect of destroying creative freedom. Take a new creator who's had some exposure to the community, but no art experience, and they'll think things such as always have sync and monochrome bad, and that they must have some sort of style which are insanely black and white statements. These two sides are demonstrated perfectly through the current feature levels list of this game. It wasn't always like this, but it has devolved into it. In this community, these two aforementioned approaches is hammered into huge portions of the community and that there are no inherent issues with the execution of art in the first place. But here's the thing. The message of art is completely dependent on what the creator wants, but how they communicate that message is where art becomes more objective. The easiest way to express that objectiveness are through things like form and value, color harmony, and at a more advanced level, the user design tools. I have expressed that countless times to some of the stubborn players and creators in this game, and it is genuinely stressful and frustrating how impossible they are to discuss with. Now, don't mistake this for me saying that there are only objective points within creating art. That is not better than saying everything is subjective. The idea that everything is objective or everything is subjective is a pretty incorrect way of looking at this topic. After having researched into the philosophy of art expression, I can confidently state what the ideal answer to all of this is. In order to do that, I will bring up one of these frustrating discussions I had with two different players, who shall go unnamed because this is the GD community and pointing out anyone for dumb beliefs will be sent death threats. Not kidding. By the end of the argument, the two of them ended up in this circle jerk of agreeing with each other and eventually sent this video about objectively bad art. I decided to actually give the entire video a watch to see what he's talking about and to see if I could get a different viewpoint. Maybe I was the one in the wrong. If I had said something that is inherently incorrect, then of course I should own up to that mistake. So I reviewed the entire video that they mostly believed in. Now I do actually recommend you watch this entire video yourself because it is genuinely incredible and very intelligent. But for context, the people who sent this very video claimed that they were agreeing with everything except the ending, which I would argue is the most important part. He has a very philosophical discussion about the expression of art, and everything he has to say about it is correct. One important aspect that he mentions is that the appreciation of art on a subjective level also comes down to your experience with art. If you learn what can be achieved through the expression of art, your level of standard and appreciation of it will increase once that new standard is met. And surprisingly, the part of the video these people disagree with is the one that ties all aspects discussed together. He mentions that he doesn't just want to hear your opinion that you like or dislike something, he also wants to know why you do. He explains that it doesn't end at sensory abstract pleasure, it can be intellectually fulfilling. 
He is not satisfied people just loving their favorite pieces of art. He wants people equipped and thoroughly intimate with the tools required to prove and perform their love. Quoting him, philosophically, there is definitely bad art. Art being subjective is no big news. Whoever disagrees with that either doesn't understand why or doesn't want to bother trying. Creative processes aren't something you can rate objectively, but art expression has a product, an intent, a target, and etc. So of course, that will be subjected to some extent. But here's the thing. Even if I've been falling into this category of individuals myself, the fallacy of this is good slash bad according to X is very common for a lot of players and creators in this community to fall into. It's definitely displayed by the enjoyment rate top players present with their extreme demons and how people base their opinion off what they say. The demonless community truly shows this aspect of the community off in the most extreme way possible, like how the levels of Abyss of Darkness and Slaughterhouse are so much harder than levels like Cataclysm and Ice Carbon Diablo X. And to some people, that somehow undermines the achievements of the easier levels because the subjective list said so. By that type of mindset, it's common knowledge that 2 plus 2 equals 4, but someone could say, according to who, about 2 plus 2 being 4, and it wouldn't change a thing. There are objective views and opinions that can be given for art. There are, they exist, they're there, it's 2022 so no one gives a sh**. But someone could take this argument and completely reverse it, and it would make the same amount of sense. It's what you have to consider and understand before arguing about any of this. And as the GD community has proven, they don't. Most GD people give creating advice based on what they think is right, which is the worst thing you can do for anything regarding the expression of art. And since the true objective views on art are excluded entirely out of the discussion when criticizing anything in this game, the views on what is considered the best and worst levels are insanely inconsistent. They push for these terms and ideals about subjectivity and conformity to the extreme and basically force others into it. It is such a widespread issue now that it's practically universal. Many subsections of the community, particularly the moderation team and Robtop, essentially enforce a standard based on these GD conventions that ends up hurting creative freedom. The community, in many ways, ranges from the extreme, if I take any criticism, is it even my level anymore? To the other extreme, you have to have a style to be good. The video I mentioned previously regarding objectively bad art and the philosophy discussed within it is somewhat difficult to make it work with the levels of Geometry Dash, but the approach of creating art can be somewhat put under the same spectrum. Many creators in this game doesn't consider the intent behind the art creators are making, which I can speak from personal experience with some of the creations I've made over the years. This part in the Hell Inferno is probably one of the most controversial in the series, because I've seen players and creators, including moderators, who completely despise it, use it as only glow spam. My intent with this section was to simulate the inside of an active kiln, and if you look up images of what this looks like, yeah, it's pretty f***ing bright. The type of criticism expressed through most of the GD community never ever considers what the intent might be. This is why levels today look so similar. They're expressed identically over and over because this is what the community overall views to be right, and going outside of that is considered a negative. There are some creators and players out there I know personally that can effectively critique art properly and keep the intent in mind even if that can result in something looking strange, uncanny, or just plain weird. In the end, the true argument is never about if art is subjectively or subjectively good slash bad, but if you as the audience like it or not, and if despite that opinion can appreciate it or not. I'm 100% like CJ the X. The expression of art is subjective and always will be, but there are still objective criteria that I want to follow and understand if I am to appreciate the expression of the art on a more technical level. Most of my favorite music, movies, and games of all time have an intent that was intelligently executed, littered with originality and complex concept executed beautifully. But Stormfly, even if there are objective criteria to artistic expression being successful, your interpretation of the criteria can still be subjective. Yeah, of course. If I didn't consider that, that would be like me yelling at a three-year-old, Why aren't you smarter? This is clearly better! I'm pretty sure even in the best and worst Extreme Demons video I established that I definitely weren't and will never be able to be 100% objective on ratings of this kind. As stated previously, I have experience with the expression and execution of art so my standards are different from others. Of course, I can't expect people to have the same opinion as me. As much as I would like to believe that the categories I chose are objectively ideal, it will not be the same for everyone, and I have to accept that. But at the same time, this way of thinking makes no sense to me. I know some people are like this, and that's fine, because I just won't discuss topics like this with them, but I can't even fathom to imagine why you would think like that. If every statement on criticism is subjective, how will any creator of any media make good use of this criticism? How does it help them, make them strive to improve and do better? 
What does criticism mean if it's all subjective and any form of encouraging or demeaning words towards the art mean absolutely nothing? Like, what do you think the consensus is for how video game critiques rate video games in the first place? Do you think everything they say come from a subjective viewpoint? Look at artists who has progressed over the span of 10 plus years, comparing their drawings of then and now. While the older art can carry a subjective sentimental value for both the artist and observer, evidently the newer work is better as a result of improving based off constructive and objective criticism. Usually this improvement is the sense of proportion and the work of shading and texturing. The assumed intent for most of these was to make them look realistic, and the latter drawings were an improvement based off that criteria. Take a look at a different YouTube channel, Corridor Crew, who has spent years now reacting to the visual effects in movies, shows, video games, and more. Regardless of whether they are reacting to bad or good visual effects, they will explain why it looks good or bad. There's an intellectual discussion explaining why what they've done is bad or good. Like, there's numerous issues with the shot. That green is, you can see the little green in the grass in the top left corner there. The green of his eyes is way more saturated than the most saturated green that's in the scene. The camera wouldn't be able to capture that much saturation. He shouldn't be as saturated. How much do you think they actually care about making this 100% None. real? None. They don't care at all. Not only is the animation and the lighting <laughs> materials flawless, their lens simulation is flawless. The way he's going out of focus at the edges, the way the environment behind him is being transmitted through the focus at the edges, it's all perfect. They discuss the intent behind what artists, animators, and more try to accomplish, and they discuss in detail why it worked or why it didn't work. These are rules that people in this VFX industry follow because they are objectively correct. Or if you want a Geometry Dash example that happened recently, the video where Colin called out Geometry Dash Sub-Zero for having terrible coin indications. There was research put into the subject on what makes a coin good or bad, and Colin described the coins of Sub-Zero as lacking indications of where they are, and you have to make guesses of where they could be when you aren't encouraged to do this anywhere else. There is a right approach to creating certain things, hence going back to what CJ the X said previously, it doesn't end at sensory abstract pleasure, it can be intellectually fulfilling. I am not satisfied with people just loving their favorite pieces of art. I want people equipped and thoroughly intimate with the tools required to prove and perform their love. Repeating myself once more, the expression of art will always be subjective, but there are objective qualities surrounding the execution of said art. The message of art is completely dependent on what the creator wants, but how they communicate that message is where art becomes more objective. That is what the community needs to realize and understand. This is what they need to embrace and abandon these two sides of what is deemed correct to do. In short, individuals who view any execution of art as a subjective opinion, I will have no interest working with at all. Working together with these type of people will be impossible for me. They are the polar opposite of me in terms of artistic vision, and their opinion will probably be as consistent as a dog trying to find the exit out of a furry convention. They might even be insane enough to say that Mein Kampf is a book worthy of considering its ideologies as a positive. Well yeah, whatever enjoys subjective. Maybe I enjoy Mein Kampf.